Welcome to our recorded Mass here at All Saints Parish. Assisting us today are Emily Bergdorf is our lector, Mike Wathen is our technician, cameraman, and all things technical, and he and Amy Eager will put it together on the web for us so that we can view it whenever and wherever. And Sister Catherine Brown is here to pray with us. Thank you all for your service. We're celebrating today the 11th Sunday of regular time, and we gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with Amen. your spirit. My brothers and sisters, the Lord sends his apostles out today to try out what they have learned, and uh, he sends us out to do the same. Let's take a moment to reflect on how well we've been doing. Lord Jesus, sometimes we are pretty successful in spreading your word with your help. Sometimes we are not so successful and sometimes we don't even try. And so we pray, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, strength of those who hope in you, <clears throat> strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas, and since without you our mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. They had journeyed from Rephidim, entered the wilderness of Sinai, and camped in the wilderness. Israel camped there in front of the mountain. Then Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him from the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the Israelites, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on evil things, and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession out of all the peoples. Indeed, the whole earth is mine, but you shall be for me priestly kingdom and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the Israelites. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> His people, the sheep of his flock. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lambs. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. We are his people, people, the sheep of his flock. <coughs> know that the Lord is God. He made us, his we are, his people, the flock he tends. We are, we are his, his people, people, the sheep of his flock. The Lord is good, his kindness endures forever, and his faithfulness to all generations. We are his people, oh, the sheep of his flock. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more surely then, now that we have been justified by his blood, will we be saved through him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we are reconciled to God, through the death of his son, much more surely, having been reconciled, 
will we be saved by his life. But more than that, we even boast in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> The next reading is taken from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, beginning with verse 36. The Gospel of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 36. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. When Jesus saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve apostles, his disciples, and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew. James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. Philip and Bartholomew. Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector. James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus. Simon, the Cananean. And Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You receive without payment, give without payment. Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus has been working with his disciples for some time now, and He's like the master teacher, and the disciples are like the apprentices. Apprentices have been with us probably from the beginning of time, from the beginning of human life in a way, and the master teaches them the skills that they need. We have apprentices now, we have apprentices in electrical work, we have apprentices, apprentices in plumbing, in carpentry, in building and, and sculpting and art and, and all kinds of things. And the master wants to make sure that the apprentice knows as much as he or she does. And so today comes the test. Jesus is sending them out for the first time to try to do what he did, try to imitate the master. And it's not going to be easy. So he tells them to avoid the Gentiles and avoid the Samaritans and go just to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. You can get around to the rest of these people later. But the house of Israel may understand better and not be prejudiced or whatever against them, and they might have an easier time. So he sends them out on their first test, and he names them, all 12 of them. He names, he gives their names, and we know what they are, but let's just hear them again. Simon, known as Peter, his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Now, that was 2,000 years ago, 
And we believe now Jesus sends us out as his disciples, his apostles, really, to spread his word. And so now he can send, uh, he might name people like Emily or Mike or Catherine to be his apostles or Sally or Joe or whoever you are. He's naming you and sending you out to bring his word to the lost sheep of Israel and the lost sheep of the world because this flock is going to go much beyond Israel as it does nowadays. And he sent them out to proclaim the good news, to cure the sick, to raise the dead, to cleanse the lepers, to cast out demons. This was a heavy task, difficult. But Jesus thinks they can do it, and he gives them the power and authority to do it. And we might think that we can't do any of that stuff. But it may be not as complicated or as difficult as we may think. We're sent out to evangelize, to bring his gospel, his love to people. And let me tell you a story about St. Francis of Assisi. Francis one day told his brothers that he was going out to the closest village on a preaching mission. He invited one of the young friars to come with him because he was a novice and needed to learn. He was an apprentice, who we call him in our language. And so they headed for this village and they came across a man who had been injured. He was bleeding and he was in bad shape. And they stopped the bleeding and they cared for him as best they could and they arranged for somebody to come with some medical skills and assist this gentleman. And then they went on their way and got closer to the village and they came across a man who was homeless and had hardly had no food left at all. And so they shared their food with him and got him to a place where he could be taken care of. And so on throughout the day they got closer to the village but they kept running into people who needed assistance. And so finally as the sun was beginning to go down closer to the horizon, Francis said to the novice, let's go back to the friary because it's time for evening prayer. And the novice said to him, but brother, brother Francis, you said you were going to the, preach the gospel to the village and we haven't preached the gospel at all yet. And Francis said, Oh, Friar, we've been preaching the gospel all day long by all the things that we have done. And that's how we do it. And so the novice learned another lesson. And that's how we can spread his word and be his apostles. Just to spread his love by helping those who need assistance, by showing compassion to those who are hurting. Not that we can solve their problems, but we can listen and empathize with them. We can do so much to even change this world. So let's just take a few moments to think about what masters have you had who have taught you about the Christian life, and about Jesus and his work and our work? Who have been your masters? And what have you learned from these people? And for whom have you been a master? Who have you taught? how to look God's way and spread his love. Let's just take a moment to reflect. We believe that we are God's apprentices who have now become his apostles. Let's profess our faith together using the Apostles' Creed. We believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
We believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, you send us out into the world to bring healing and hope. Instill in us the faith, vision, and energy to do that work. We praise the Lord. Lord, Lord hear Lord. our prayer. <coughs> With the leadership of our church, grant them the needed wisdom to guide our church to becoming a more vibrant and renewing presence in our world. We praise the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. <coughs> those missionaries who have answered the call to proclaim the gospel in foreign lands, bless them with courage and strength of spirit in their ministry. We praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Help our world leaders find a path to peace in the most troubled areas of our world and move hearts away from the temptation of violence. We praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Bless our fathers on their special day Confirm them with love in their vocation and continue to strengthen them in their life giving role. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. Touch those sick members of our spiritual family and restore them to wholeness of body and soul. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. In memory of our beloved dead, embrace them in your heavenly kingdom, especially Phyllis McAtee. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Lord God, we ask that you hear these prayers and all the prayers in our hearts. Answer us as you see best. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed, Blessed be God forever. Pray, friends, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise, the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all God's holy church. O oh God, who in the offerings presented here provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food, and renewing us with your sacrament, grant that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation. 
always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ. For out, of, for out of compassion for our waywardness, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from an ending death, and by rising from the dead, gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, Lord, God of hosts, hosts heaven and earth, earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. highest. And blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed, and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. This is the mystery of faith. When we eat this, this bread, bread and drink this, this cup, we proclaim your, your death, death Lord, until you come, come again. again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring us to the fullness of love, together with Francis our Pope and Joseph our Bishop and all the clergy and the people of God. Remember Phyllis McAtee and all our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them to the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her husband, with the Blessed Apostles, with St. Anthony, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. We praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him and with him and in him, God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant peace and unity in accordance with your will. We live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's offer one another a sign of the Lord's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. O Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Now let us pray for the gift of justice. Grant us, Lord God, a vision of your world as your love would have it, a world where the weak are protected and none go hungry or poor, a world where the riches of creation are shared and everyone can enjoy them, a world where different races and cultures live in harmony and mutual respect, a world where peace is built with justice and justice is guided by love. Give us the inspiration and courage to build it through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now as we celebrate Father's Day, let us ask God's blessing on all of our fathers. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you made all things, especially fathers. Bless these men that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may always honor them with a spirit of profound respect. We ask this blessing in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Happy Father's Day to all your fathers. Let us pray. A 
as this reception of your holy body, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.